back once again at the Kennedy Space Center. We are in a planned uh, hold in the uh, automatic countdown, leading up uh, still, though, toward a planned launch at 10 a.m. Eastern time, less than 15 minutes from now. The crowd is smaller this time, but uh, probably just as enthusiastic. And here you see some of them uh, at the Titusville, which is about 13 miles or so away from the launch site. They're along the banks of the Indian River there, and our correspondent, Jack Curtis, is there with them. Jack? Yes, Frank, the excitement is building here among the hundreds of people gathered at Titusville, which is about 13 miles across the water from launch pad 39A. The visibility this morning is not very good. The launch pad is barely visible through the haze. And of course, the crowd is much smaller than we had a week ago. Partly, it's that 31-second lockdown last week, and also the overnight technical problems that contributed to the skepticism as to whether this bird is going to go or not. Still, some people have returned to this exact spot, and we'll be talking to some of them a little later. Frank? Okay, thank you, Jack. There's the beautiful blue sky with only a few scattered clouds above the launch site here at the Kennedy Space Center. We're going to go now to uh, the Johnson Space Center in Houston and Hugh Downs. Hugh? Yeah, Frank, I think it's interesting why they fire the main engines and get them up to 90% strength for a few seconds before they light these solid rockets. They can't turn off the solid rockets once they go. And once these engines are lit, they're not on center line, and the whole thing flexes. This is a little bit flexible, like a fishing rod. It flexes 25 inches under the impact of the firing of these. So they have to wait until it sort of springs back. And when it's in line again, these are lit, and then it's centered enough to go and, uh, and not be uh, off its line of ascent. In a way, this stack, the orbit and its tanks and boosters, uh, it's a, a living, breathing thing. It has metabolism. It, it uh, burns fuel, it develops temperature, it moves. And once we know it's also flexible, uh, we have the feeling that, uh, that it's more living than, uh, than anything else. Frank? Thank you, Hugh. It is indeed more living <laughs> than anything else, as you said. Well, we are still in the uh, planned hold at uh, T minus nine, but uh, in about uh, a minute or so, they will pick up the count and we're headed toward a 10 a.m. scheduled liftoff. Now, there are quite a few things to watch uh, during the launch, that uh, very important uh, events that will take place, and Jules Bergman has prepared this report on exactly what takes place when the command is given, the engines start, and Columbia begins its journey. T minus nine minutes, the count resumed. The launch director has now made the decision to go for launch. T minus seven minutes, the crew access arm is retracted. Now the only method of immediate escape for the crew is by using the ejection seats. T minus five minutes, the electronic safety pins are pulled. The solid rocket boosters can now be ignited. Range safety now has control of explosives which could destroy the shuttle if its flight path were to endanger people. T-minus two minutes and 55 seconds. The orbiter is now on internal power. Final pressurization of the external fuel tank begins. The beanie-like vent cap is retracted. T-minus 28 seconds. The orbiter's computers take control of the countdown. All five computers must be operating synchronously for the countdown to continue. T-minus seven seconds. The shuttle's three main engines ignite, one after the other. By T-minus three seconds, the main engines must achieve 90% of their power. T-minus zero, the moment of truth. Simultaneously, the hold-down bolts are blown as the solid rocket boosters are ignited. Three-tenths of a second later, we have liftoff, with the shuttle clearing the tower at 6.8 seconds. One half second later, the roll and pitch program begins the maneuver necessary to put the boosters in Columbia in the right attitudes for orbit. T plus 43 seconds, the shuttle's main engines are throttled down just prior to the point where Columbia faces its maximum G-forces. 19 seconds later, the shuttle resumes full power. T plus two minutes, seven seconds, the solid rocket boosters burn out and separate from the shuttle. Now the Columbia's main engines are on their own for the final push to orbit. Columbia is now steering for its precise window in space for main engine cutoff. All right, that was a recorded report by Jules Bergman uh, to tell you what, what to look for during the uh, launch uh, sequence. This is a live shot. We don't want to mislead you. The, <laughs> the shuttle hasn't gone yet, but uh, every uh, indicator is that it will go. Here's a shot from way across the Indian River. 
across the beautiful blue waters. There is, does seem to be a little bit of haze, but boy, there is certainly none evident out here from uh, our vantage point. And the countdown is expected to be resumed very shortly now, Gene. I believe some of those events uh, that uh, Jules were reporting on, particularly all the way up through Solid Rocket Booster, uh, we ought to be able to see today with the uh, naked eye and certainly with the television camera. Jules, uh, what kind of a view do you have out there? Is there a bit of mist between you and the uh, launch pad? Uh, Frank, no, that's a no. Uh, the, the mist or haze Jack Curtis has is because of a river, uh, the Banana River and the Indian River, in, Indian River, lying between Titusville and the launch pad. It's clear as a, clear as a bell. Launch director George Page asked for a slight delay in picking up the countdown at this point while he checks a couple of things which he heard during the countdown. He has just checked with the rain safety officer to determine that a, uh, that a dropout of the main carrier uh, wave that is used by the rain safety people uh, is not serious and that a backup carrier signal uh, is satisfactory. He is also checking on several other things, and we will get back to you as soon as the determination has been made to pick up the countdown. This is shuttle launch control. All right, Gene, uh, so they have not resumed the countdown as planned uh, at the uh, appropriate time. Uh, what uh, what precisely do you suppose is the difficulty? Frank, I, I don't interpret that as being anything serious. George Page, the test conductor, again, has seen a few little... Uh, questions he has. There's no problem in extending this hold an extra minute or two or three. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a very appropriate par uh, point to pick up the count at T-minus nine minutes, and perhaps it may go at 10.05 or 10.03 yes. or 10.07, but uh, the test conductor wants to make sure. This is a test program. It's not just a test program in space, but it's a test program uh, from the ground on up, and he's part of that test program. He just wants to make sure that everything that can be done on the ground to alleviate any problems at all is going to be taken care of. Okay, let's see if we can get some more information about this now from uh, Steve Bell and Joe Allen, who are at the Johnson uh, Space Center in Houston. Steve? Frank, we're sitting here listening in on these messages just as you are and uh, trying to interpret them. Joe, how do you assess what's uh, just been told us? Steve, it sounds like it's uh, a problem in Florida. It has to do with uh, people that follow the spacecraft outbound, make sure it's in good, healthy state, and uh, for some reason they've lost a radar or something. I'm unsure as to what's happened. But could this uh, conceivably hold things up for a long time? I, I, it's conceivable. I, I think they'll fix it fairly quickly. There are several methods to track it, and, and we'll see what happens. And as we've just been pointing out, uh, we are in a situation where everybody will take that extra minute to do that extra yes. uh, check. Uh, it's not critical right now if you fall 10, 20 minutes. How long do we have this morning? Uh, we have uh, certainly over an hour. I would guess about two hours. Mm -hmm. So, uh, indeed, that's the reason for the hold. Uh, we have a choice of uh, picking it up. So we can, we can wait and be a little patient for a few right. minutes here. Okay, now you've been through all this in the simulators. You're looking forward to a mission in the future where it'll be your baby. Uh, what is an astronaut thinking about when you suddenly hear something like this? The countdown doesn't resume. Are you really busy or do you have time to think about what's ahead? Well, I think uh, Joe Engel said it well last time. He, uh, when heard uh, some bad news, he said, take your time and get it right. I'm sure that's what uh, they're thinking right now. But you're not as busy. I mean, if things are on hold, you're more or less on hold too, aren't you? <laughs> Voice of uh, shuttle control. Just checked on uh, a number of problems which had come up during the countdown to determine that there are no constraints at the present time. He has spoken to the launch crew and says, let's take our time, it's been a hard one, watch all your data, but we're going to do it right. Uh, he has uh, spoken to the, uh, the crew, and he's uh, to Joe Engel and to Dick Truly and said, we're going to give you a good one. We're in the process now of the test conductor going over the hold criteria with the launch team to let them know what point holds can be called and what the proper procedure is to call that hold. Uh, launch director George Page has told the launch team to take their time and do it right. We're standing by now to get word of the point at which we will be picking up at the T-minus nine minutes point. This is shuttle launch control. Well, all right, we're just going to have to wait then, aren't we? Frank, what you're seeing here, I, I believe, is probably the highest degree of uh, professionalism that we can uh, 
uh, see exhibited because uh, we're not just on an adventure here. Uh, this is a program that has so, uh, so many far-reaching effects, uh, not just for the two guys on top, not just for a few of us looking at this launch, but for this country and for the future and, and for where we're going. Well, when George says, uh, let's do it, if we're going to do it uh, at all, let's do it right, uh, I think uh, he is looking forward to the significance of what this vehicle means to the future of this country. Yes, but at the same time, Gene, I have to point out that all we've heard all morning long now, you know, has been everything is going just fine, everything is uh, perfect, and uh, no difficulties. Uh, Bermuda tracking station, uh, that was straightened out and so forth. The weather is fine. And uh, here we are at nine minutes now before the launch, and all of a sudden we learn that they are not resuming the countdown. It doesn't necessarily mean that anything is wrong.